Welcome to Season 2 of Alternative Living Chats. This podcast is where I speak to like-minded people who have decided to give up on living in the standard house and found an alternative lifestyle. If you would like to be a guest, please drop me a message. All my contact details are in the podcast information. Also, please remember to leave a review as this helps other people find us. I hope you enjoy today's conversation. Today's conversation is with Andrew Andrew Richards, who has changed his life by moving into a van. He's also done an awful lot of walking, and he's a um, a narrowboat broker. So I hope you enjoy today's conversation. And please don't forget to leave us a review. Thank you. Hi, and today I have Andrew with me on my podcast, and so he's going to introduce himself, and we're going to have a chat. So hi, yeah, uh, my name is Andrew Richards. Um, I uh, live in a van um, full time uh, with my little pup, um, and I am on the, I'm a boat broker too. So that's I make my living from boats, basically on the canal. I can do any boats, but basically on the canal. That's what I love doing. The, the yeah. inland waterways is my thing. So, how long have you been living in your van for? Um, uh, well, I'll tell you the story that sort of got me into doing it. Really, yeah. is um, I. For my 50th birthday, I wanted to treat myself because no one else is going to do it for me. So, um, <laughs> uh, and, I, and I had this thing, I want to do something special. Um, from a very young age uh, and being at school, I remember doing a, 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 a even though it was a long time ago, I remember doing a, a, a project uh, which was about volcanoes. Uh-huh. A lot. Um, and the biggest volcano in the world uh, was Kilimanjaro. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, I thought for my birth, let's go and climb it. Wow. Um, so I did. So in uh, September 19, um, before the world went a bit mental, yeah. um, I got myself a little fitter, did a smaller mountain in May, um, in the Atlas Mountains, um, and got myself ready. And on September, yeah, September 19, um, with a company, met with a load of people that I've never met before. And we went and climbed Kilimanjaro. Um, and it had a massive effect on my life of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to live. Mm. Um, whereas I've been sort of renting for, for a long time and it's just dead money and it's a waste of money. And you're spending a lot for living in a place that I didn't really want to be in too much. I, I'm not really a, an indoor person. Yeah. Um, I decided I need to do something. Um, I don't. I've been around the canal network for most of my life. I didn't want to have a boat. I didn't want a slow pace life where I was sort of restricted, which you are to yeah. a point. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I did a lot of a lot of research into vans uh, and van living um, and pros and cons and um, didn't paint too much of a, a dreamy picture about it, but understood that it could be difficult. Mm-hmm. Um uh, people think moving on to canal boats, uh, you have to lose a lot of stuff. On a van, you, Even more. you've got your clothes and your soap and you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very restrictive, but, but it's great. And, and so, yeah, um, um, straight after that, I started looking, I started looking for a van, um, and it took me nearly a year, um, mm-hmm. to sort of get it to where I wanted to be because I also looked at layouts. I looked at the second hand ones. So I found a beat up old decorators van, uh-huh. um, which had to be completely stripped out, and it was dented, and it had issues. Got them all sorted mechanically, found a company that could do a fit of the van. Yeah. Um, so I needed, uh, what the one thing that a lot of people don't have is a proper shower and all that in their van. Yeah. And, uh, that was very, very important to me. Um, I have to present myself in a, in a professional manner, and I don't want to stink. Um, so um, um, I've, I've got this proper shower and toilet in the van, so I hang my clothes, full-size cooker, um, um, so I like to cook uh, yeah. a fridge and a, a proper sink. Um, had um, uh, solar put on, uh-huh. um, so that I've got I've got uh, I've got a really really good uh, uh, solar um, setup. So that's really really handy. Doesn't mean I don't have to charge my batteries um, every now and then yeah. um, when the weather's not great. But you learn to conserve, um, um, and. So in yeah, so in the September twenty, um, and we all know what happened then. It was yeah. Delayed things a little bit. Um, I picked up the van. Uh, there's a few little issues that we got sorted out, and um, and that was that. Um, 
found spots where to live, spoke to different people. There's, there's a little bit of a community, just like just like the, the boat in, uh, community, uh, of where to park, where to go, mm-hmm. what to do, how to get any work done. Um, and I've travelled about a bit, um, quite a lot. Of uh, the, the first big trip I did was the North Coast 500 up in Scotland. Oh yes, yeah. was amazing. Um, I've done Wales. I've not done any Europe yet. But I've done the Peak District. I've, I've, I've been pretty much to the bottom and top of the country. Wow. Um, uh, and it's it's fab. Yeah. Um, it's restricted occasionally. Uh, um, and when we had gas, uh, when there was issues with, with getting gas a while back, yeah, um, it was difficult because my heating runs off gas. Okay. I didn't go the diesel heater route. I need a tank for hot water too, so I could have a shower. Yeah. Um, so I've got a, I've got a, a, a Truma heater for the water and the heating. Uh, so it's blow heating in a really good amount of hot water. Oh, piping, piping hot water, uh, for a shower, which is great. So even on a cold day, you can keep warm. Yeah. Um, getting gas is difficult, but you can also use it off the electric. Um, um, but yeah, that was a, that was a small issue. Water can still be a, a bit of an issue occasionally, but yeah. again, you learn to conserve what you can use and what you can't. Um, but I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Um, I don't know if it's something I want to carry on doing for maybe five, ten years. Um, yeah. but there's still places I want to visit. There's still places I want to go. So even if I did decide to go back and, and have, um, bricks and mortar again, I think mm. I'd probably keep it man and, and, and do, do tours and stuff. I do want to go, I do want, do want to go to Europe at some point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's great. Wow, it sounds amazing. And as you say, there's a community as well involved, so you can contact people and meet up with people, which is even better, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you, you go on things like YouTube and you see where people have gone in their vans and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And, um, and you just, it's very, you know, you see that yeah, somewhere looks fantastic and you can just, you can just go. Yeah. You just it. go. You don't have to think, well, do I have to get a hotel room? Where do I go? There's always parking spaces. There's always parking no matter what even if you've got to travel a little bit yeah um but once you've got there you can wake up in the morning there's some of these places you can wake up by the beach um um in, in the middle of in the middle of nowhere i mean i you know there's a, there's a place sort of near to where i am now that um in bedfordshire where i there's a, there's a forest up there and uh, you can go and bury the fan the, the van in the forest I've got a canopy on it too so i've got the canopy out um and just be up there you can't hear a thing Apart from the rustle of animals in the trees and stuff like that, and, yeah, um, and you can have a, you, you can do anything. You can have a little as long as you're sensible. You can have a little barbecue up there. I've got got one of these um, uh, little projectors as well, so oh, yeah, watch a film, put it on the side of the van. Um, that sounds yeah, perfect. It's, it, it's, it, the, yeah, it's just just the fact that you can I want to go somewhere and go. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, and that and that's that that freedom is is. It's huge. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. You know, oh you don't. You always feel like you don't have that thing. You know, when you sometimes just want to get away for a bit. Yeah, yeah. That's... You just go. You just go. What? What? Where would you say has been your favourite place that you've found so far since you've been doing this? Oh, definitely Scotland as a trip. Yeah. Uh, as a trip, it's. I I'd, I'd been to Scotland once, um, and and I didn't really see a whole lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, and since I planned to do the trip and, uh, and got up there and I was taken aback of how beautiful, yeah, stunningly beautiful it is. Um, wide open spaces. Uh, people say it's very busy. I didn't find that. Um, there's still places you can be sort of on your own, even in like a time, you know, I went early September on, on that as well. Um, yeah. To miss all the midges and stuff like that. Um, yeah. and, uh, you'd think that's the busy time. And, and while there were people around and it was hard to get into campsites, I wasn't using campsites a lot. Um, right. There was just one day where it was just incessant rain that you, it was, you know, I just sort of park up. I thought I'd charge the batteries, yeah, and whatever, and, and clean up the van. It was a weekend. Did some laundry because you can get them places anywhere now as well. Yeah, cleaned up the van, got myself ready, set uh, for the next sort of week. But it's stunning, yeah, it's stunning. I, I can't describe. I, I feel gutted that it took me to this age. Um, to discover it, really, yeah. Um, yeah. the beaches, the the the, the wilderness, um, Balmoral. I went to Balmoral. Um, that was stunning. Um, 
there was a there's a there's a pyramid in Balmoral. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but there's a pyramid in Balmoral that you can walk up to, which is mind blowing that you've got something like that in this country. Wow. Yeah. It's um, cool. And and again, you're in this sort of in this great big forest, and while we met people up there, there, there was hardly anybody about. Um, yeah, the, the, the say the, the beaches, the people, um, it's stunning. Uh, yeah. Everybody needs to go out there. And, we, and, and then I popped over to the Isle of Skye, which, which oh, right. was, again, fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Awesome. So, You've yeah, got the wonderful just, wildlife and everything as well, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. very much so. Yeah, very, very much so. And I, and I, and I, and I enjoy being outside, you know, all, all year round. Summer's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Summer, but autumn, autumn and, and all that is, is, is superb. Um, had, had, had no issues uh, getting water or anything like that. You could easily pop onto sites and flush out your toilet. Oh, brilliant. Um, fill up your water. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a service charge of like, yeah. five or ten. Um, but again, you know, you learn to conserve a little bit and, and use these. And these people are giving me a service and, and their and their business is in 12 months a year. So, you, you know, it helps keep them keep yeah. them going too, which is really good. So yeah, that was that's definitely my favourite place um, as a trip. Yeah, um, I have various places I stop, um, um, uh, which are which are all, all 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 good in some respects. That's good. That's but, really yeah. good. What about what's what would you say has been your you know your worst or the most difficult thing since living in the van? Um, the heating, as I say, needed gas, and we and, and we sort of, the whole country seemed to. Uh, Run out of gas a little bit. I can only fill up petrol stations, and they were stopping doing stopping doing LPG at a lot of stations. Oh right. Um, so that was difficult. Um, obviously not in summer, but winter yeah. can be. Um, um, a tank a last uh, a week and a half, two weeks. Oh right. Uh, generally, you can you can do it less. But yeah. Again, yeah. you can learn to conserve and just a bit like the home home heating, you can time it so it yeah. comes on in the morning and stuff like that. Um. And it'll probably cost me a whole tank of that that will last for that long. Anything between twelve and seventeen quid. Oh, that's depending not too where bad. you go and get it. Yeah. Which is which is in the grand scheme of things, yeah. absolutely brilliant. Um, the only other difficult thing is getting water sometimes, because where you can go to petrol stations and just fill up with a hose. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. Uh, oh they right. Don't allow that. I don't know. Um, no. Um, but uh, because I'm around boats. Yes. Marinas do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marinas will always allow you to fill up, so um, yeah, I, 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 I know that. I know that no. really. oh, that's but again, perfect. you learn to Yeah, and so that's that's ideal. That brings us around because obviously now your job is selling boats, is what you're saying. So what? Yes. You know, do you want to explain exactly what you're doing with the boat side? Because that's how. You yeah. Um, both together, sort of thing. So yeah, so so I, I've always had a love of boats. Um, in the Look, as, as much as I'd like to, I, I think I, I don't look my age. Um, when I first bought uh, or looked at buying a house um, in the late eighties, early nineties, there was a time where houses were completely out of reach. Yeah. So when we first went to uh, buy a house um, or buy somewhere to live, yeah, we didn't think there'd be anything other than a house. Um, there was a, an opportunity um, to buy a narrowboat. Uh-huh. Um, um, it, it was an option. Um, and I sort of fell in love with them uh, at that point, but didn't buy. Um, but I've always been around the waterways, uh, always loved it. And then, and then got, um, got an opportunity to run a marina, oh, wow. um, um, of, 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 uh, of which encompasses everything to do with yeah. it, as you can imagine. Um, and we had a part of... Uh, uh, Selling boats within that within that marina. Yeah. Um, um, so what I, what I did is that I, I, that's something that I really really enjoyed because I, I the whole lifestyle for me is 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 very backwards in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, it seems to have stood still. Um, it it um, as much as there's been a lot of progress with the engines and solar power power and all that, it, it's it's still sort of stuck in time, and, it, and that's what. That's what I love about it, but also what I hate about it in some respects. Yeah. Um, so, and I, and I, and I, and I see that so many new people wanting to buy a boat, and I wish that I had somebody I, I'd like people to perceive me to be with selling boats that, that helped me through and got me onto the waterways. So I decided to take a brokerage course, um, and become a 
qualified broker, which is just a posh name for an estate agent for boats. If, yeah. we're, if, if we're going to be, uh, that's all it is. It, it, it sounds great. On, it looks great on your CV and you can tell people, hi, I'm a broker, but you, you, you're an estate. You're brokering a deal. That, that's yeah. all it means. Um, which isn't as difficult as it sounds. Um, so, so yeah. So I, I now work for a, a company um, that that just sells boats. That's what they do. Um, and if it floats, they'll sell it. And they're an international company. But I, I again, my 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 bit is the inland waterways because I live in the waterways. Um, but with the experience I've had, I sort of know what I'm looking for. I know what makes them. Uh, I know what gives them the value. I know. Yeah. Uh, what people are looking for, what issues can come up, what the learning curve, what in, what that involves, um, and because I have so many new people coming on uh, to buy boats because they see, I don't know if it was just because of COVID, it may have been beforehand, but it seems to be since COVID, people had, may I think I think just the change of thinking. Well, I wanted to do it. Why not do it? Because you yeah. don't know what's around the corner. Uh, yeah. I also think there was people that, that had leisure boats that couldn't use them. Um, and, uh, and and times being tough through COVID and, and obviously coming into now, moving their boats on, uh, so it all seemed to work. But you know, there's still boats are available. So um, so my job is just to basically see people at the broker a deal, and as long as the seller is fair and it's a fair price, I, and I try to negotiate a, a fair fair price for all. Yeah. Um, uh, that that and I help people onto the boat. I try to give them advice, blatant. Um, black and white, put people off boats. I've told people not to buy boats. I've told them what they need to do, mm -hmm. what work needs to be done, and how difficult that can sometimes be to try and get someone uh, of a standard, sorry, excuse me, of a good standard to, to, to do the work for a boat because that's not always easy. No. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, and, and how long that would possibly take and what benefits uh, there are to it. Yeah. Know? Um, and as I say to, Pretty much everybody for the two or three days a year where you can have that picturesque, sunny, beautiful Britain um, summertime with a glass of wine, chilling out with your friends. Um, yeah. It's worth it. And it is. Oh, and it is. Yeah. But you get winter time and you have the odd little issue and your bilge pump stops working because you've not got the right batteries and there's no, no way you get power because of this and that. And you could be letting water in and, and, and it all gets a little bit scary. Mm. You need to be aware of that. You need to be top of it. Um, so it's not a, I wouldn't say it's not a calm way of living, but you've, you've got to work at it. Yeah. Um, you've got to plan. You've got to check. You've got to get your hands dirty sometimes. You know, you've got, you're going to get wet. You're going to get cold. You're going to have to get your supplies in unless you want to splash out, go into a marina, mm. um, which seem to be getting more and more expensive, unfortunately. Um, with licenses getting more and more expensive. It's not as cheap a way of living as it once was. So I try to be as blatantly honest with people as I possibly can and try to dispel the dream. Yeah. Um and and, and make it you know, make it the reality of what it's gonna be so that there's no surprises. Um and as I say, I've even told people not to buy certain boats, which is a detriment to me in some ways. Yeah, of course. But it is. the way I see it is a long term view. And you want to hurt, I, I, like I said, I, I would have loved to have said to someone to say, buy this boat, but this is the issues with it. So, but my, my, the reason I didn't when I was younger was because of fear of not knowing what I'm doing and what I could do and what I could potentially lose. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I, I try to do that. It's not just about, I don't just do that. So I'm not dependent. I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to tell people that there's a hole in the boat and somebody's put a cork in and please take this boat off me and I'll get you a good price. Yeah. That's not, that's not how it works. Um, and that's from me. That's not just the company. I'm sure the company would like to think I'm doing a good job doing that, but, um, uh, that's, that's just me. I wouldn't feel right unless, unless that was the case. Um, no. So yeah, but it's, been, but, but you know, I've had people that have, that are new come into it, bought a boat, uh, through me and come back and said, uh, I'd, I'd like something else. Yeah. Um, size up, size down, yeah. whatever they want to do. And, and I think that's the, the best endorsement you can have. Definitely. Um, for doing that. Yeah. Um, and you just, you just try and help people through. It is a lovely community. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I love it. And the people, um, the people on the whole are great. Mm. Um, and it is, it is, as I say, stuck in time. And I think that part of it is the, the bit also that I love. Yeah. Um, 
that there's a there's a proper community and you love and, and, and you know it's a lovely place to be with 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 good people. Um, yeah, and that's to have a job and to and to be around these kind of people. Um, it it doesn't feel like a job. No, that's it's, it. I mean, it's it's nice. Different, it's, and yeah. you're seeing different things all the time as well, aren't you? So you've got your best yeah. of both worlds, really, at the moment, didn't you, with your van life and living where you want to, when you want to. Um, yeah, and, well, I can take my office with me. That's well. it. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect, isn't it? So it you, is, can, yeah. you travel everywhere around the UK looking at boats and everything, or are you just... No, no, area? no, I've, I've, got a, I've got a specific area. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I'm not tied to just, you know, if I found out, if someone said to me up in Scotland, I want to sell a boat, I could do it privately. I've got the qualifications to do it. That's it, I'm yeah. happy to do it. And, I, and the contracts I use are all British Marine Federation um, uh, uh, contracts. Because mm-hmm. um, that's one of the other things with boats, that people don't always have proof of purchase or proof of yeah. ownership, uh, even of boats. So, you know, that's that's a thing that we have to look out for. Yeah. Um yeah, I could do it anywhere if I really, really wanted to. But uh, I like doing it through a company because yeah. part of it I hate is the, the amount of money. It, it terrifies me. Yeah. Um, and we have boats, obviously, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds. So, um, having said that, the ocean, the ocean going inside of it, uh, there's millions. But um, yeah. I don't have to handle that. I, I, I handle the bit that I think I'm good at that I've been told I'm, I'm reasonably good at. Yeah. Um, and then the money side of it, I just. Yeah, you know, I, I I stick out. I say, right, speak to this person. This is the the person who does all the finance and stuff. Uh, and you speak to them. The deal's been done. I'll help you through with anything else, but the finance part of it. No, I don't. I don't get involved with that. Um, no. So I'm quite lucky, really, with the backup of a company because it gives people peace of mind too. That's, they're yeah. going to spend a hundred thousand odd plus on a on a boat. Um, I I, I don't want any questions asked. Of me. It can be done through a company where you your money's secure and safe. Yeah, that's really good. So if anybody's looking to buy a boat at the moment and they're interested or want some information, do you have um, contact details or are you on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that that they can get hold of you? Uh, well, 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 no, not really, if, way, if, no? if I'm honest. Um, I, I, I try not to go the Facebook. Uh, I'm not but a little bit on social media, but not too much. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is that is that there's a lot of people out there that will always be interested in your boat. Um, mm. They're not really. They just want to come and have a look at it in there. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, some people are living on these boats, and I don't. I don't think it's right that you know, other people just come trouncing in and, and whatever. And, uh, no. Um, and and all of it, you know, and they're very precious. These things. These are people's homes as well that they've looked after and love, and regret selling on, on yeah. a lot of occasions. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, no, I mean, if you if if you went through um, the, the company website, that yeah. would be the best way to get hold of me. Um, which is boatshed.com, uh-huh. um, the inland waterways. Um, you can do it that way, but um, that's good. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't I try not to do social media too much. Um, that's fine. There's a lot of boats in there that, that I wouldn't touch with the barge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can and, you know, um, I, yeah, I, I don't I don't want people coming back to me going, well, that boat you sold me, that it needed this and it needed that. Yeah. I, I try to steer away from it. So the stuff that we're that I take on is usually you have a very high standard. Yeah. So absolutely. it doesn't mean they're overly expensive. They just have a good standard because I know what I'm looking for. That's the main thing. And and what I'll do is, though, is I'll put in the comments the website the company you work for so that anybody then can contact you through that and if they're looking for boats and everything because they'll yeah. know that obviously they've been vetted first and they've got the peace of mind because that makes a huge, huge difference yes. when you're buying. Yeah, that, of course. Yeah, which is uh, really yeah. good. So I mean, so if you're giving somebody a bit of advice that's for you know coming out and looking for a, a boat for the first time, what would you say were the three main areas to look at? Um, right. So the the, the things that I look, look at that have a massive uh, determination if I even take them on or, or what price yeah. they would be uh, would be overplating. Mm-hmm. Now, some people you say you can do you can do a good overplate. Yeah, that's 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 very true. Um, However, I wouldn't touch one ever, not, not because at some point it's going to deteriorate. And if that ter- deteriorates, um, would you, you know, it's 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 hard work. That's yeah. boat out. That's that's water between the plates. It's just something that I won't touch. It's yeah. just something that I won't touch. Um, how how you use your electric, um, as in in regards to an inverter, mm-hmm. um, and how you gain your electric. Solar is. Is something that a lot of people talk about. Um, there's been a massive 
uh, well, there's been massive strides forward in not just solar, as in how much you get from the sun, but how you store it. So batteries yeah. are massively important. Um, and, and, and most boat builders, most, not all, um, as it is changing, will just give you your normal, your normal acid batteries. Yeah. Um, and they do that to keep the price down. But the, the way to go, if you can afford it, is lithium. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, there's, there's a reason for that. So most batteries you can get, go through what we call cycles. So they can go from empty to full. Yeah. And you, you can, most, most acid batteries do about 50 cycles. If you get a lithium battery, it can do generally a thousand. Yeah. Um, um, and they don't use as much, um, energy out of their batteries, although they do cost significantly more. Yeah. Um, but you do, you know, if you put them side by side, price per ampage and length of use, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. So you, I always look at the electric, how you get it, the solar and, and the batteries. That's a that's a huge thing. Um, and the other thing to look for is is the engine. Uh, I know it sounds obvious. Mm. Um, there are a lot of older engines and, and, and whatever out there, but it doesn't necessarily mean mean, mean they need replacement. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it's uh, if they're looked after forever, these things like yeah. they are. You know, they're, they're, where, where a lot of the marine engines come from is through uh, through farming, believe mm. it or not. Um, if you look through the history of, of B to marine, see where they come from and where they uh, and what they did, um, and it, it's you know it just goes to tell they're, they're well built and they'll, they'll last forever. If they're looked after, yeah, um, they'll, they'll 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 do you they'll do you well. Um, and, and a lot of people say, oh, I do it myself. I do this. Do Please look after your engine. You know, I've bought a lot of engines. Um, over the years, and they're not yeah. cheap. Um, and, and 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 on most occasions, if not all, um, it was it wasn't necessary. If they'd have been looked after, they'd have been absolutely fine. So, it unfortunately one of the things that a lot of people do on boats is don't keep records, or they never used to, of of any engine maintenance or anything yeah. like that. But even if you are doing it yourself, you qualify to do so. Make make notes, you know, and put it in your service book and stuff like that. Because again, if if you know, if you're new to it and you're coming into it, you think, well, why is it that? Isn't there any records? Why isn't there any receipts for work done or, or anything like that? You wouldn't do it when you buy a car. No, that's um, it. You know, and, and, and a boat is sort of between a car, it's sort of between a car and a house. It's, yeah. a, it's a little bit of both. So, you, you know, you, you really want to make sure that the, the things that can go wrong, that are expensive to go wrong, are looked after. Um, yeah. So look after your engine. Make sure you've got good electric and make sure the thing's going to float, really, yeah. I think, to be honest, uh, long term. Um, and and, and I'll just add in something else. I know this is a four. It's okay. Every time you buy a boat, regardless of how old it is, please, 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 please get it surveyed. Yeah. No, please get it surveyed. Not an in-water survey. It's pointless. It is really pointless. Um, get it out of the water. And I know it seems like it's a lot of wasted money because training, you're not going to gain that back, even if they decide you're not going to buy it. And mm. that one means dead. Yeah. I, and I'll tell you a horror story. When I first started doing it, it was an older boat, really well built, had 12, 12 and a half wheel plating at the bottom, which was not exactly standard, but that's, you'd think that was pretty, pretty, pretty good back in the day. Because I think most boats now come in eight. Yeah. Um, and hadn't had a survey, but the thing seemed solid. It, it, looked, it looked like a tank. It was, uh, it was a, it was a beaten up old thing, but it could do somebody, it could do somebody a turn, you know, it could be yeah. a, it could, they could have turned it into a, into, into a, yeah, something really, really special. Didn't want a survey, and I went, okay, okay we've done a survey, that's absolutely. Didn't try to push the guy to get a survey, if I'm totally honest. Yeah. Um, because I was new and naive and silly, and, uh, about a year and a half later, he had real issues with the boat. The whole bottom needed to be replated. Wow. Which, which even then, prices have gone up significantly since, yeah. uh, in, since it was going to cost him anything between eight and twelve thousand. Um, so yeah, please, please, no matter what you do, get a good surveyor. Okay. Yeah, get a good surveyor. Um, yeah. and, um, and pay the money, get the thing out of the water and get it looked at. And you might think, you know, it's dead money, but it's the best investment you, you'll ever make if you're going to buy a boat. That's excellent advice. And it's, it is definitely worth, I know you see, and it is, as you say, it's an outlay initially for the survey, but at the end of the day, mm-hmm. it's your home. 
And when you're buying a home, you have surveys done and everything like that. So it's just, it's common sense really, isn't it? It's, uh, but I know there are people that do like take a risk, but uh, personally, it's yeah. not something that I would, it definitely wouldn't do. No, not when you're going to be living in it as well. It's uh, no. I, I mean, I, you know, with, with, with the greatest respect in the world, you know, there's a lot of people that say they've been on boats for a long time, they do this and do that, and then they take it for granted, and they think, oh, I won't go in the engine, but I don't need to, it's, everything's fine. Yeah. I've done it myself, and again, through experience, um, I don't know if you know the Blissworth Tunnel? Yes. Well, yep. It's, it's, I think, the third longest tunnel in the country. Yep. Very long. Probably takes about, if you're not going to be silly, it probably takes about 40 minutes. Yep. I was bringing a boat back once that just been repainted as mechanically sound um, just for the tunnel just as it was about to get dark and I thought well it's going to be dark in there I'll just get through the tunnel I'm all right just bringing yeah. a boat back towards Milk Keys and Banjo I just checked in the engine bay and I don't know how I don't noticed it um, but the engine was half underwater oh wow um, went on to the electrics the build had stopped working I was literally it was in the dark where it was raining I think it was February so it wasn't warm yeah. And I was bailing out, bailing out for my life. Um, I luckily I hadn't gone into the tunnel. I've been in deep, deep, deep yeah. trouble. Um, I may not have made it out. Um, but decided to check, but yeah, um, it was one of those things. And it was just me being silly, not, you know, taking things for granted. So, yeah. you know, I'd like to say I'm perfect, but I've done it. Um, and, and, and a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, just, just be, just be careful. Yeah, uh, definitely. No matter what you do, just look after the things. Yeah, it's, they uh, sink. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, <laughs> they do. And you, see it, and you see it regularly. People, unfortunately, it, yeah, it's up and things like that. And it, it's it is it's very sad when that happens. But uh, yeah, it is. It's never good. Yeah. So, but mm. so obviously this year, have you got anything planned for your van? Like, you know, have you got? Is there any big trips? Um, sorted out. Yeah, I'm going back up to Scotland. Finally. Um, yeah. Um, but not. It, 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 I'm, 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 I'm walking most of it though, to be fair. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm not, not really, I mean, I, I've, I've got nothing planned as, as such, but I'm going to be sitting down over the next, the next few weeks thinking I'm going to plan the rest of the year so I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, I've, I've wanted to do Ireland, uh, for a while. Yep. Was nearly, nearly did it last year, but, um, may do it this year. Nothing, nothing certain yet. Um, I think, I think, I think everybody's sort of sitting there and, Thinking how bad thing, how bad are things gonna gonna be? Yeah. Um. So, but but I think you know you know Bob William um get over to to, to to Ireland. I want to do Southern Ireland. It just looks extremely it's pretty. It's very very pretty. Yeah. Uh, and, and also a little rugged. Um, yes. Um. And and uh, yeah yeah sort of left. I like places that are sort of left. I don't blame you. Yeah, they're the best ones. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, uh, and to and to do that again you know, would be would be really really, really special. So, but also I, I I do want to go down to um uh, the the east coast of France. Um, there's a lot of places down there that are, that are unspoiled. Yeah. Um, and, and I I as I I quite like the French. <laughs> Most <Yeah>. people <laughs> find them a little exactly. arrogant. And a bit rude. Yeah. But the, the the thing is about them, you can. You never have to guess what they're thinking. No, that's and it. that's why I can't think about them. <laughs> yeah, um, you can tell straight away. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll tell you. Uh, but yeah, who doesn't love who doesn't love red wine and cheese? Exactly. You know, so, <laughs> you know, so, Perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, so, yeah so, so possibly, but nothing planned but yeah. definite as yet. No, it's the best way to take it and see it and what happens and you can change your mind if you need to, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's exactly. So yeah, that is that is, that is the, the, the it biggest is. It is definitely so. Well, it's been really lovely to chat to you, and uh, you. it's been very interesting. And um, I'm sure you'll do really well and carry on selling lots of boats. And uh, hope I'll put all the if anybody's listening and they're looking to buy a boat, I will put the website in the comments so that uh, in the description of the podcast, so that people can uh, have a look at the company. And if, the, if, I mean, if anybody wants. Wants any advice or anything? I'm, I'm I'm more than happy to help because, as I say, it is a community. You like to look after people, yeah, and you'd like to think that you know that will come back and, and do you good, pay it for them, all that kind of stuff. You know? So, Definitely. um, yeah, if, if people want help and advice about more more than more than happy to to, to have a chat. That's fantastic. Thanks ever so much, and uh, I've really enjoyed today's chat. Yeah. Thank you.
Thanks. Enjoy today's podcast and thank you very much for listening. Please let everybody know about the podcast so we can grow the Alternative Living Chats community. And if you want to join me, drop me a message. And also all the, the details of today's guests will be in the information of this podcast. Thank you.